Hello and welcome back to Shadel VR Creates Code Block Scripting Tutorials for Meta Horizon Worlds. In this video, we will be focusing on a basic player manager that listens for events sent directly to the player without any additional wiring between objects. We will achieve this using the Listen to Events code block. In Meta Horizon Worlds, the Listen to Event code block allows you to receive all events from another object. You can find out more information about this feature in the Horizon House of Waffles code block reference documentation, which is linked in the video description below. As an example, by using this code block, objects such as triggers can send events directly to the player when it is entered by someone without requiring any wiring to the player manager object. The player manager script will then hear and execute the event called. Let's go take a look. Okay, here we are in Meta Horizon Worlds. As you can see, I've already created a trigger and just a reference block so that when we are in preview mode, we can see where that trigger is in the world. We will need two code block scripts for this example. One will be called our player manager. And the other will be called our trigger entered. To begin in the player manager, we will need to create two list variables. The first will be our players list. And next we will need our scores list. Now, the first thing we will do is populate those lists with null data empty empty data in other words so to do this when uh, world is started and I'm going to need a temporary variable which we're just going to call I while I is less than the maximum players allowed in your world currently meta has a maximum of 32 players so 31 elements in the arrays would give us a total of 32 players, 32 element spaces in the array. Now, if Meta decides to increase player capacity in the future, I particularly would not want to run around and have to remember to update all of my player managers to the maximum world capacity value. Granted, I'll have to come into the world to update it in the world settings. However, I don't want to have to mess with my player manager. That's just my preference. To future-proof this, I'm gonna put an arbitrary number here 99 in my case, which will create 100 empty elements for my two arrays here. So that if in the future I come in and change the player capacity to 50 or to 75, these elements will already exist in my code. I won't have to come back into the code to update this number to create more space for those additional players. So when world is started, we're going to loop through 99 times setting, well, we're actually gonna loop through 100 times because remember elements, uh, arrays, lists <laughs> start at index zero. So 
So this is our loop. So that's going to do 100 loops. Now in those 100 loops, we want to add stuff to our lists. The players list will receive a null player. Meta calls it their server player. And we will also create the scores list and fill it with zeros. So now each list will have will be filled with 100 server player IDs and 100 zeros. Next, when a player enters the world, we want to update the element in the players list to reflect the player that just entered the world. So we are going to set the value at, and we are going to get the index of the player. The player's index is a value that Meta Horizon Worlds sets for each player in the background upon entry into the world. This isn't typically a number that you see anywhere, uh, but it does exist and we can access it through scripting. So at the index of the player, so let's say the player's index is three. So the third element in our players list is going to get set to the player's ID. Next, we need to add the feature event, which is listen to events from an object. In this case, our object is the player. So now when the player has entered the world, we are going to update our players list to add the player to it. And we are going to start listening to events from that player. Let's go create an event. When event is received, and we will call this player scored. And when we receive this event, we need to receive it with a player object. so that now we can again reference the player to set the value at the player's index. And this time we're gonna access the scores list. We're gonna increment the scores list at the player's index, so in my example, third, the third element of the, the scores list will get updated. And to do so, we need to access the current number, and we know that it's currently at zero, but that will change. So we will need to get the element, oh, I'm sorry, I need to add an addition in here before we do that. We are going to get the item from the index of the scores list, and we are going to add one to it. Okay, now let's go take a look at the trigger entered script. Now this script simply needs to do one thing. When trigger is entered by a player, we are going to send the event we created in our, in our player manager script, which we called player scored, to the player, 
Now remember, player scored is listening for a variable as well. So we need to also send the player with the event. So when, when trigger is entered by a player, we're going to send the player scored event to the player with the player as a variable. So now that we're listening to the player over here, the player manager will hear that we've received player score and we've received it with the variable player. Now, if we go and attach these scripts, the trigger is getting the trigger entered script. Now we need an object to attach the player manager to. This can be any object. I, for one, like to use text boxes so that I can keep track of all of my managers um, throughout my games. So let's just call this player manager. manager and we will attach player manager script now as you can see we don't have any wired variables going between the player manager or the trigger we do need a place to see what's happening I'm going to simply display text on self, which is going to be the text box that we just created. And we will concatenate a few items together. And if you watched Vidu's latest scripting tutorial, he talked about concatenation. Here we are looking to put the name of the player before a string of text has a score of. And I'm going to grab the score out of the, the player score out of our number list. However, in order to display a number on a text string, we need to convert the variable to a string. So, and I'm just going to copy the get item from the scores. And we'll display that on self. Okay, now let's move this text box down a bit so that we can see what is happening. Now if I go into preview mode and I enter the trigger, Shadow VR has a score of 1. If I exit and re-enter, it will increment my score. Now, if I exit the world, which in build mode, by entering build mode, effectively exits the world, I would want my score to reset to zero, and also the world should stop listening to the player at this point. If I were to re-enter the world, my score will not have changed, assuming the instance hasn't closed. So to prevent this, our player manager When the player exits the world, let's reset that player's element in the player's list back to the server player. We should also set the score back to zero in the scores list at that index. The last thing you're going to want to do would be to stop 
listening to that player. We are no longer sending or receiving events from this player. So now when I enter preview mode and I enter the trigger, you will see that it is working as intended. And when I exit the world and re-enter the world, my score has effectively reset. And welcome back. Thanks for watching this Horizon Worlds scripting tutorial on Player Manager Scripts. I hope you found this video helpful in learning about the Listen to Events code block and how it can be used to create powerful communication between objects in your world without the need for excessive scripting or wiring. Remember, Player Manager Scripts can be as simple or complex as you need them to be, depending on your game's specific needs, so don't be afraid to experiment with different scripts to find out what works best for you. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more Horizon World scripting tutorials, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to support me, you can check out my Patreon page linked in the description below. Also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Instagram for more updates. All of my social media accounts are also linked in the video description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!